Hello, my name is Thomas Brown, and I am a recovering film gear addict. So what's a film gear addict? Or what is gear acquisition syndrome? It's basically buying more film gear than you need, can afford, or could possibly ever use. And we hold our I'm sure some of you film addicts will agree the best part about getting a new piece of film equipment is unboxing it. It's funny because we already know what's in the box but we still have a feeling of excitement. And after the box opens, the pleasure doesn't stop there. You still get to remove all the little goodies in the box. And finally, you get to remove the plastic, revealing your new toy. A new piece of gear almost feels perfect in your hands. That feeling is almost as good as eating something delicious. The last year when my film purchases were out of control had to be 2016. I had booked over 60 weddings and 10 big corporate events. And while my film business was making more money than it ever had, I was really stressed trying to keep up with all the editing. And so I would constantly buy gear as a sort of reward for myself to ease all of my stress and anxiety. It wasn't until I guess a few months later where I was doing my 2016 taxes that I realized that I had spent over $40,000 buying film gear. I decided to make this video because after the Canon R5 and R6 was officially released, a lot of people have texted or DM me to ask if I would be moving from my Lumex GH cameras to either the Canon R5 or R6 to film my weddings. If they would have asked me this just three years ago, I would have definitely said yes. I can't tell you how many cameras I've purchased over the years in search of the perfect camera. Well, actually I can. And this is just four years before I purchased my GH5. I've owned the Canon 7D, T3i, 70D, 80D, C100 Mark I, C100 Mark II, Sony A7S Mark I, A6000, A6500, and the Blackmagic Production 4K. I need the perfect camera. How many times have you said that? How many times have I said that? If my camera could only film in 4K, it would be the perfect camera. If only my camera could film super slow-mo in 4K, it would be the perfect camera. Once I buy the perfect camera, then I'll finally be happy. If you find that you are in the situation I used to be in where you are constantly buying gear all the time, here are my three recommendations. I love the short film that Peter McKinnon made using the Canon R5. However, it would be unrealistic for me to think that I could make a video just like his because I bought the same camera. I would have to work diligently on my filmmaking abilities and color grading to be able to achieve a similar result that he did with the same camera. I really like what Sean Tucker had to say about photographers obsessing over gear. And of course, this applies to video creators as well. Never ever buy a camera because I use it. The brand that you use, the lenses that you buy are only tools to be a photographer. Making you a good photographer is all about your brain behind the camera. I put a lot of thought into our obsession as video creators with finding the perfect camera. Why are we never happy with the camera that we currently have? I mean, we were excited when we first bought it, right? And I've made so many videos about why I love the GH5. It's crazy that so many people would ask me if I'm gonna give up the GH5. I mean, it's small, compact, it shoots 4K 60. It doesn't shoot. Oh. <laughs> I realized that we're not obsessed with cameras at all. We're actually obsessed with camera specs. It makes sense because for a long time, I was chasing specs. When I had the Canon 70D, I wasn't happy because it didn't film 1080p at 60 frames per second. Then I got the 80D, which did film 1080 at 60 frames, but I needed a cinema camera that had unlimited recording. But I wasn't happy with the C100 because it didn't film in 4K. So I bought the Blackmagic Production Camera 4K, but it was too big to carry around at weddings. If you watch a lot of YouTube videos on filmmaking or photography like I do, it can be 
hard to be happy with the gear that you currently have because it seems like so many channels just constantly push new stuff. A few weeks ago, I took a serious look at my channel and saw that I was doing the same thing with a lot of my videos. So I decided to remove half of my YouTube videos. I only kept the videos that I felt were giving my audience real value. I don't want my channel to be one where creators who like my work think they have to buy what I have to make better videos. My second recommendation is to watch a documentary on Netflix called Minimalism. Okay, so if you're not already familiar with the Minimalism documentary, it was directed by Matt Diavella, who also has a popular YouTube channel where he shares his experience as a minimalist and gives advice for self-improvement. My life is about efficiency, optimization, multifunctionality. Nothing goes to waste. Three years ago, my wife and I watched this documentary and it completely changed the direction of how we were living our lives and how we now decide on how to make all of our purchases. The film, of course, talks about minimalism, but more importantly, it made it clear that more stuff doesn't mean more happiness or more contentment. In actuality, sometimes you can feel less fulfilled. Black Friday shopping mania is still playing out tonight at malls across America. Yeah, high hopes of saving some big bucks on those holiday gifts. Stores filled to the brim. In some cases, it did turn violent. Ready? I was born ready. There's nothing wrong with consumption. The problem is compulsory consumption. If there was a call to action after you watched the minimalism documentary, I think it would be to pursue things that bring your life value. They're not telling you to get rid of all your stuff, but to put less pressure on yourself to accumulate material possessions. In our case, video gear. But I'll be honest, four months after we watched the documentary, which was in 2017, we did get rid of all of our stuff. We decided to sell our house and buy a much smaller one, which cut our mortgage by more than half. And we also got rid of 70% of our stuff. So I guess we didn't get rid of all of our stuff. We got rid of 70% of our stuff. This included all of my film purchases as I wanted to see if I really needed all of the equipment that I had accumulated over the years. And I didn't. Some of my gear I had literally opened once and then soon after I put it back in the box, never using it again. So I ended up selling or giving away almost half of all of my film equipment. My goal was to only keep what I consistently used. My third recommendation has to do with money. Well how you spend it. Even while I was still a camera gear hoarder, my wife, who was a financial analyst for years, always had a rule for our videography business. And it's a rule that I followed for the past eight years. And that is, we would never buy film gear if we had to use credit cards to purchase it. So if I don't have enough cash in my bank account to buy the camera or gear that I want, then I can't afford it. If you feel that a certain camera will help you take things to the next level, but you don't have the cash for it, rent the camera and practice with it constantly. And then when you land a gig, rent the camera and add the rental cost for the equipment into the cost for your services. And for those of you just starting out, you don't need the most expensive lens or the most expensive camera to get started. So to answer the question for anyone that wants to know if I will be moving from the GH5 to the Canon R5, my answer is no. And if you have to ask why, then you weren't paying attention. Peace. Thank you.